I'm sure our dogs are loving the fact that we are home a lot more spending time with them. But as things start to change in the next couple months and we go back to work or school and we're not home as much, it could be a pretty big change for our dogs. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the common behaviors that you might see from your dog if they're having a bit of separation anxiety. And you're gonna learn about what to do to deal with those things and also how to prevent them from happening in the first place. I'm Cal McCann, welcome back to McCann Dogs. It's pretty common for people to think that when their dog shows anxiety when they leave, that it's very much about you know them loving them so much and being so sad that they've left. But you're gonna find out from today's video that it's not so much about you, it's about what you do. Let's talk about that word separation anxiety. And for a dog trainer, that's a, a, actually a pretty big word. And uh, there can be a lot of different degrees of separation anxiety from you know just sort of minor up into really, really extreme cases where dogs are, you know, have the potential of hurting themselves. And um, if you have a, a very extreme issue with separation anxiety, we definitely suggest that you find a local behaviorist and, um, you know, let them know your particular situation so they can give you the right advice. There's a lot of pretty common things that dogs will do when they're anxious or um, feeling uncomfortable about you not being in the picture. Things like you know, tearing up your things, ripping apart the furniture, barking or excessive whining, drooling in their crate. There's many things that dogs will do that uh, show stress. And we wanna to talk to you today about some of the things that you can do to deal with some of those behaviors. If you look at things from your dog's perspective, you know, the last couple months, you may have been home a lot more. They might not be have been crated as much. You're not leaving the house. And um, their routine is probably getting very comfortable. They're used to you being around all of the time. But, you know, in, you know, hopefully a short time, that could change. You might need to go to work again. You might be away to school. You might be leaving the house on a more common basis. And if your dog is not used to that, it could actually cause your dog to show you different signs of stress. Let's talk about leaving the house. Now, dogs are incredibly situational um, learners. So if you happen to do the same routine before you leave the house, you know, you, you know, grab your keys, you put your shoes on, you do things, you know, in a specific order, your dog will start to anticipate that and they'll start to feel, oh my gosh, they're doing those same three things they always do, they might be leaving. So, you know, think about changing up your routine a little bit so that the um, your exit strategy isn't quite the same thing every single time. Another thing that I want you to think about is try not to make a big deal about you leaving. You know, when you leave the house, try to avoid the, oh, I miss you so much and the high squeaky voice that we do. A lot of dogs, it just sort of encourages them to get more excited and then you get them all ramped up and then you walk out the door and you have to sort of expect that they're gonna be sort of leaving with that, um, that you know, wanting for you to come back. Um, it's better off to get your dog in a more calm state before you leave. You might give them something to distract them. You know, maybe they, you stuff a Kong or give them a chew bone and you put them in their crate. And I would suggest putting them in their crate several minutes before you leave, even 20 minutes before you leave. Put them in there, make sure that they're settled, they've been walked, they've been exercised, give them a nice Kong or stuffed bone and um, put them in that crate, let them chill out for a little bit. And then you can sort of sneak out of the house without making it a deal. And that will really help your dog to realize that when you leave, it's not that big of a deal because you're exiting in a much more calm manner. Now, sadly, this isn't just as easy as stuff a Kong and then you can leave for the day and not think about it. There's a lot of dogs that will start to pair. You put me in the crate, you give me a Kong, and then you leave for eight hours and then the stress starts to, to back chain from there. So the absolute best way to work through this is to do it in small increments. So you might, you know, put them in their crate, give them a chew bone and just go outside for a couple minutes and then come back in and just sort of hang around the house. Again, don't make a big deal out of the dog, just sort of be very neutral. Then you might repeat the exercise and, you know, go down and get the mail come back, then you might go to the store and just start to slowly increase the time that you're away or make it very random. Sometimes go out for longer, other times just go out for a moment and then return back to the dog. You need them to understand that when you leave, it's not necessarily gonna be this big dramatic thing. It could be for short little spurts here and there all throughout the day. Now, if you have a dog that can sometimes be a little anxious when you leave, it's also really important that, you know, when you come home, you also don't make a huge deal about coming in the house. If you've been gone all day, 
and you come in and you're, oh, hi, pup, pup, see you, see you. I'm so excited. You know, it just ramps your puppy up and just gets them more excited. You know, it's better off to come in and just, you know, ignore them for a moment. Let them sort of take a second to settle in their crate. Once they're calm and relaxed, then let them out and do all your snuggles and all those things that we love to do. Um, but it is important that we we um, play down the whole going out and coming back for the dog because they're so good at reading body language, they will start to be able to read those scenarios. So we need to try to make those particular triggers a little bit less obvious to our dog. Now I mentioned the use of a crate and uh, if you have a dog that is having different anxieties when you leave, um, introducing a crate into their routine could be a very, very helpful thing for you. It gives them a place where they can learn to be calm and safe. It also is, is going to prevent them from eating things in your house, which could potentially you know, be bad for your house, but also dangerous for them. Or um, you know, scratching at the door and just sort of you know, lying longingly at the door while you're gone all day. So the crate's gonna be really important. Something to keep in mind though, is that if you're only using a crate when you go to sleep or when you leave the house, that can actually um, cause the crate situation to be more stressful for your dog. So we highly recommend that when you use a crate, that you use it for many times throughout the day for short periods of time, even when you're home, so that your dog understands that that particular process or place doesn't necessarily provoke you leaving and disappearing. They could be created while you make dinner or help the kids with the homework. Um, whatever it might be, we need them to understand it's not necessarily going to be um, for a long time. It could just be for a moment uh, or two. Some dogs can be a little bit anxious in their crate even when you're in the house. It doesn't even need to be when you're leaving and going actually away. So, you know, another thing that you can practice is make sure that your dog is crated, you know, in a local area where there's lots going on. But if you have a dog that tends to be be a little bit more anxious when you leave, try practicing having that crate in a little bit more of an isolated spot where you can actually rehearse leaving the room and then coming back, leaving the room and then coming back and conditioning the dog to be comfortable being in their crate and being calm even when you're not in the same room. Um, there's a few little dog training tips though that I need to help you with in order to make sure that you do that process correctly. Some dogs will show a lot of anxiety by barking or whining in the crate and it's a pretty common human reaction to hear barking or whining in the crate and then just walk back into the room and say, it's okay, it's okay. And um, unfortunately, from your dog's perspective, it's very much like you're praising the dog and telling them, good dog, way to bark, way to whine. So if you happen to be in the other room and you're healing, hearing a lot of whining and barking, it's actually best just to wait until you hear a few moments of, of calmness and quiet. And when I say moments, I literally mean one or two seconds. And at that point, from out of the room, we want you to let your dog know that they're right by saying yes. And then you can move into the room and then praise your dog or even throw a few cookies in their kennel to remind them that when they're quiet and calm, that's when good things happen. That's when treats arrive and that's when their favorite person walks into the room. But we wanna be careful that we're not accidentally reinforcing that separation um, anxiety by um, praising or showing up in the room at the time when the dog is the, the most anxious. That can actually make things worse rather than better. Now you may have heard us talk about in other videos in terms of barking in the crate that um, we would suggest you interrupt that um, behavior by going in and, and addressing it. But um, for this, we're gonna do things a little bit differently because a lot of times when dogs have separation anxiety, just the act of you walking in the room, whether you're coming in with positive or you know, irritated intentions, the fact that they can see you again is just enough. So for this particular behavior, um, it's important to wait until you get calmness before you actually move back into the room. Um, and this can be pretty tricky if you can't really see what your dog's doing. So you can go a little James Bond if you want. You can get um, you know, a mirror or something and set it up so that from around the corner you can see what's going inside your dog, going on inside your dog's crate. And there's a number of different ways that you can reward them as well. You could just praise them from the other room with your voice. You could walk in and throw a couple cookies in your crate, uh, in their crate. Or you also could use something like a remote treat dispenser where you know they it can pop food in your dog's crate for you while you're in the other room. Um, all ways that ensure that when your dog is getting positive reinforcement, it's in the most crucial time when the dog is not showing any anxious type of behavior. Again, it's not about you, it's about what you're doing to address or reinforce the good behaviors. It's really important that you don't wait to find out whether your dog's gonna have certain anxieties when you go to leave them. So um, play around with some of these things now. You know, If you haven't spent a lot of time apart from your dog or 
or crating them while you're home or um, you know leaving the house and coming back and, and you know checking whether your dog is going to be worried or not it's important to start that now because if you have to go back to your job or whatever it is and you are going to be gone for a long period of time we don't want to be putting the dog in a situation that they're really they've never seen before you might be at the point where you know if you go out or if you're in the other room your dog might have graduated out of their crate maybe they don't need to be crated anymore um, but if you find that you're sensing some you know anxious behaviors barking while you're gone things like that sometimes when they're in a more open space there's more room to move around and get themselves all worked up it actually can uh, provoke that anxiety feeling a little bit more so please don't be afraid to to backtrack a little bit maybe you reintroduce your crate for a little while until you can sort through this and then of course you always can graduate to having them out of the crate once again but sometimes um, giving them the freedom in, in the house or letting them pace back and forth um, can actually encourage them to get more worked up and having them in a quiet safe place can sort of get them to think about relaxing and um, associating that particular place with being a little bit more calm-minded. We want you to think about the mental state that your dog is in before you leave them. Um, often a dog that is tired and has been physically and mentally exercised, they're much more likely to be cal more calm and relaxed when you're not around. It would be a good idea to figure out now whether your dog would benefit from having a pet sitter or a dog walker. Um, you know, try leaving them for a longer period of time and see what happens. You know, you don't just want to leave them, go out for the day and then just kind of hope that it all went well. You might, you know, go outside and stand outside for a while and listen or set up a camera on your dog while you're gone and watch their behavior, see what they do. Um, have your neighbor let you know whether the dog was barking or not so that you're able to work through it. Sometimes our dogs are giving us behaviors and we don't even know because we've just kind of gone on with our, our regular day and we're not necessarily paying attention to, to the signs that our dogs are giving us. Um, this is all about training our dogs and setting them up to be successful. And the only way that we can do that properly is by really having a, a very solid understanding of what actually is going on with our dogs when we're not in plain sight. We've given you a lot of tips to help you deal with some you know, pretty common separation anxiety issues. But remember, if you're not seeing any of these issues yet, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't practice these things. We want you to start this stuff now so that you don't end up having issues down the road. I referenced the importance of exercising your dog before putting in their crate earlier, and we actually have a great video on four ways to exercise your dog that has nothing to do with taking them for a walk. So if you wanna check that out, click the card right here. On that note, I'm Kale. Happy training, and see you in the next video.